You're the best dressed person at the game. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> Samantha that doesn't allow us to come dressed in, in our own clothes, so we have to be in have to be in rocket stuff. I think we should do, try and do that. Though. I think that'd be cool. It's like some content of guys in their in their own clothes. Hang on. So you're not allowed to wear no your own clothes. No. So Matt like, doesn't so, allow that. I don't know if it's Matt. I don't know if Matt's the guy that is like. I think Samantha is the one oh, the okay. driving force behind. I mean, that. I guess that makes sense. But then I quite like the thing in the NBA where they turn up to games and they're walking through the tunnel and they've got their fit yeah. on and I all think, that. I think that's what's cool. That's what I'm saying. I think we should be able to wear, like they should have a, even if it's like a couple couple games a season where it's like, I would get away games, make guys wear the the rocket stuff. But Okay, I'm going to... Home games, we should I'll, like... I'll arrange this. Yeah. Well, I reckon I can arrange this. Yeah. But I think we'll have a game where everyone's allowed to wear their best, their fit. Their fit, yeah. Their NBA style yeah. drip, as it were. <laughs> yeah. And and we'll film you walking in individually, mm. and then we can we can post be, it up. I think that'd be cool. See, you've got the best drip. Be, yeah. I think I think you'd be surprised at what guys wear as well. You reckon? Yeah, because you get, I think that's cool. Because you get to kind of know, like a you get to know a bit more about people's personality. I think through how they dress. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, like definitely. That. That's a good idea. What well, I mean, you'd still be in Crocs, though, wouldn't you? Me, hundred <laughs> percent. I might put some shoes. You saw I got some shoes downstairs. I might put I might put some shoes on. Really? Yeah. So you, you, you'd break out the Crocs for this occasion? I'd break out the Crocs for... Do you not have any, like, special occasion Crocs? Nah, nah. I always get some. I get some, for some get fluffy some, like, ones. tuxedo Crocs <laughs> for, the, <laughs> for the special That's occasion. For the NBA drip day. I still never stretch to a pair of Crocs yet. Do not I've get got, some, man. You've got some for the house. I've got... The ones I got for a house are, like, hocker. Uh, they're called recovery slides. Okay. And, that's, and they're, like, designed for, like, our post-running... Okay, that makes sense though, because you... yeah, so they're like they like arch support yeah, yeah. and all that sort okay, of stuff. Okay, yeah, but you need that kind of stuff. Like, I'd... Yeah, I just like to be comfortable. Just like even like now, like if I was I mean, at home, could, that... I think next podcast you need to bring your Crocs okay. so you feel truly comfortable. Yeah, yeah. It's like now, like I'd, if I'm at home, I'd have Crocs on. See, he's not. He's not in his comfort. I need to make you as comfortable <laughs> as possible. I have some. I have some Chris's house Crocs. And yeah, we'll just bring. <laughs> do you, when you turn I just up... have them in the thing downstairs. When you turn up to other people's houses, like let's say Christmas, right? You're going to go visit a family. Do you take your Crocs with you? I'd probably have the world. But do you not have like an inside pair? I have, I have Crocs at my mum's. <laughs> so if I go to my mum's house, like I've got Crocs there that are like mum's house Crocs. That I, I think, have. yeah, the Croc Monsieur, that's your yeah, name. No. That is you. No. There must be other players that swear by them as well. I don't know, man. I don't know. There I don't, you go. I, don't, uh, I think guys have got them on. Uh, do people wear them now? Reese has got a pair for sure. But other than that, I don't, I don't know. Were you the original Croc I think I just, do you know what? I don't think I was a trendsetter. I was just, I'm lazy, man. I just, <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. I just slip my foot in. I don't have to pull my, do my lace in there. I just foot in and go. Well, look, this is our first attempt at podcasting yeah. together. Yeah. You're excited. I'm very excited. Yeah. It's been a long time coming. I yeah. Think. I mean, I've yeah. been trying to pin this man down a to long time. come sit and chat with mm. me in my little studio. Mm. For a long time, but you were a busy man. Yeah, so, so are you. I mean, yeah, so am I. But I don't have kids like you do. Yeah, You're no. not chasing. I'm not chasing after a, after two and a four two year old. Four year old, yeah. No, it's crazy. It's a crazy life that I live, man. But I love it. I wouldn't change it for the world. Why? Right, what was the transition in basketball like for you when that happened? What do you mean? When you first had children, because mm. obviously before you had kids, life's easy, life's great. Oh yeah, yeah. And then I'm not, you know, life's still amazing mm-hmm. when you have children, but mm-hmm. ultimately your kind of priorities change a lot. Yeah, just uh, it wasn't hard. It was just, it was it was just I was always tired. Like before kids, I was never, <laughs> I was never tired. I like, I'd, I'd take, I take sleep for granted. Mm. But like now, oh, like when I had kids, it was like that first week when I remember the first week I had, we had uh, Quincy. I remember playing a basketball game because it was like the COVID times, and I played a game. I played, played Hemel, I believe, and. Uh, I just, I remember never, I've never felt so tired in my life. I've never felt so tired in my life, but I've never felt as basketball was so foreign in my life because I was so tired. But you were literally, so like, obviously if you're sleep deprived, yeah. you just feel like your basketball brain just switches off. I, I couldn't dribble the ball. I couldn't shoot. Like I was turning the ball over left, right, center. Players like, Lewis, what's going on? I said, I, I don't, I don't. Do you know like when, you know like uh, Space Jam, when they take the powers? <laughs> like that, exactly. That's what my kids do. To me. That's what your kids do too, they wow. Take, they take your powers. Kids take your powers. But but they're amazing. There you go. And we love them. Of course you do. Yeah. So yeah. shout out to all the kids out there, Lewis's children. <laughs> I love it when you bring them onto games as well. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's I, uh, such a nice moment as yeah. well. Yeah, I love, uh, and it's. I think the first time I did it um, was amazing because we, we uh, you caught the footage of it, and is that the first time you did it? Yeah, first time I did it. Yeah, oh, wow. it just it was just like a I can't remember what happened, 
uh, just like a spin of moment thing. I messaged Matt. I was like, would you mind if I if I oh, had the so kids good. run out with me? And I thought like it would be cool like that because they so the backstory of it is we're, when we're at home, right? We have a little hoop in the house, um, and obviously the kids come to the games and they see us all run out and it's fun and they see the the Bailey shouting boys' names and fans clapping all that kind of stuff and um, so. Quincy started he'd he'd run into the hallway and then say daddy can you call out number seven Quincy and uh, he'd call out like number seven Quincy and he'd come running out um so he's practicing that moment for for a while and then uh when we had obviously when we had Alonzo Alonzo joined in as well um so yeah we kind of I had to we couldn't everyone couldn't be it went from being daddy to being Uncle Reese to then being uh Philip or Jeremiah who we had last year or and the year before yeah um so yeah we've kind of had we haven't had any new new people running out yet at the house but i'm sure i'm sure soon there will be uh, that's good there'll be some, yeah. i like that yeah i think we need to get so next time they you bring them to a game mm -hmm. we need to get bailey to actually introduce them individually introduce, oh yeah I, yeah i think that, I, I think they would love that but i don't know if they'd be too scared yeah. to run out then they'd be like he'd like stop at this thing and be like, oh my god what is going on yeah yeah um that'd but, be great yeah it would be cool that's good stuff yeah it would be cool how's your week been yeah good not too bad just been it's been busy As how's we, training I said training i haven't i i i didn't train to i didn't train on tuesday well i trained but i hurt my thumb on tuesday yeah but i'm fine now um so then thursday but again i didn't train on thursday either uh we had some some family stuff but yeah was bad about. but training's been fine i mean we're getting up and down we're 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 playing well. We're preparing for this weekend. Um, I mean, guys are locked in. Uh, Samit is 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 doing everything he can to get us prepared for the games, and Ben as well, kind of our assistant coach, making sure that everyone's locked in as what we're doing scout wise. And I think we're we're really starting to. I think we're what 13, 13 games into the season now. It's, I think it feels like it's getting away from us already. So it's quick, quickly, isn't it? yeah, so quick. But I feel like we're we're starting to. Obviously, we had a really really fast start to the season. Um, and we kind of dropped off a little bit, I think. Um, but I think now we're kind of starting to see that that kind of that team that was at the start kind of coming back a little bit. So even in practice, I think guys are guys are competing, and we're 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 fighting for our for our minutes and fighting for our spots, and but also trying to make sure that we can play well together. So you absolutely need that kind of competitiveness between the squad itself, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like no one wants to be benched at the end of the day. But no, not at all. but equally if someone's working hard enough to earn that starting spot yeah. then you can't argue with that 100 oh, i think that's i think you have to be open to that in that if someone is for me i'm a massive like team player like if if someone is going to do what my job on the basketball court better than i'm doing it or gives us something that i can't give us mm. i'd happily let them play o over me or if it means that if i if we come out of a game and we win by 40 and i don't play and have zero points so zero assists zero rebounds zero anything fantastic I'm, I'm happy yeah, i'm much rather we win than yeah. than i have 100 points and we lose that's, that's the point <laughs> it's like being lebron isn't yeah. it you get 40 points and the rest of the team are failing Triple all around you all over, yeah exactly all over the crazy. Place. we're yeah. going to talk about that in the, yeah. in the show yeah. i feel like i'm going to do some intro music this is like the little pre bit cool i feel like we need to like the way the show will work is we'll sit down we'll yeah. relax we'll have a bit of a chat yeah. like this is a bit of a chat yeah and then i'll do an intro music and then we'll be professional right yeah and I'll introduce it. So we'll do that in a minute. Okay. Cool. But yeah, so I'm just getting the kind of relaxing pre-chat nice. out of the way. Nice. So if there's any random stuff you feel like you need to get off your chest about your week, you know, any frustrations, anything that's happened to you. Did anyone annoy you in, in, in traffic or anything like that? Anything you need to get off your chest? Traffic. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just an example. No, just, I'm, I'm now trying to think about people have you got who, anything who nice on wronged, this weekend? wronged me in traffic. No, we've got two games this weekend. Yeah, of course you have, yeah. yeah. The boys might be coming, boys and Zoe might be coming on the bus this weekend, so that'll be... So where are we playing this first. weekend? We are playing, play uh, MK, Milton Keynes tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow. Um, and then we play Richmond Knights, I believe, D2 team. Um, I think they're D2. Uh, in Twickenham. Right. On Sunday. Yeah. I I, I've, st I've not been to an away to be game home. yet. Have you not? Come on the bus, man. Yeah, Get I will do it when I can when I can fit it into my the schedule. Scenes. I'd like to do that. Yeah, that'd be cool. I think that's I think that's something we were talking about actually mm -hmm. is getting you guys to be when you're on that bus, mm -hmm. someone proactively capturing the Just the action. Yeah, I think it'd be cool because I don't think like you guys at home don't really see that side of the players. Do you know what I mean? Like kind of seeing them just like relaxing, preparing for games, see what people are like after games. Like we play we play games and stuff. We play cards. Um, What's the card game of choice? 
they've been playing uh i don't know if i can if i can swear on the oh podcast. okay is yeah. it the one that has head at the end of it yes that's okay. the game yeah yeah the yeah. s head game s head game s head game i've yeah. never played keep that. it pg because for the kids yeah yeah we've <laughs> like, i've done podcasts in the past where we've been completely uncensored but i feel like this is a very much a family <laughs> orientated show Has to so be. we will we you know we'll we'll rein it in a little mm -hmm. bit for sure. But yeah, so that's the game of choice, is it? I actually don't know how to play yeah, that game. To be fair, I, I kind of just watch them play it. I don't really, I get frustrated when I don't know how to do something. <laughs> and I, and like, I hate being that guy who everyone knows how to play it and you don't know how to play it and everyone's like kind of coaching you through it. Oh, okay. Maybe I need to take some time by myself like on the next road trip and just like to learn, learn how to and play it. And then you're going to turn up like the master every, out of the blue. win all the, yeah. That's a good strategy. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Do you like my little studio setup? Amazing. I've, I, do you see I've prepared it? I've got some got shirts on some the wall. Some shirts, got some... Basketball are you color. happy with the shirt selection i like that what have we got we've got uh michael jordan yeah and we've got lebron lebron yeah. cleveland yeah lebron cleveland go that's the go right there this oh my life this guy right here is he and we've got, we got kobe yeah i feel like those so, are the three main guys the three main yeah 100 for me 100 um there's still people you can't really put anyone else in that conversation mm -hmm. i don't think like put some people might say oh kevin durant maybe mm -hmm. or Trying to think about other I people. See, I don't think. I don't think KD. He's not. He's not achieved enough. No, and he's he not. Hasn't. And he's not. A, he just floats around. Yeah. He hasn't. Like I feel like LeBron. LeBron's obviously been great for for his entire career. Um. I never got to really watch Jordan. Like I saw snippets or see sort of like videos or the past. Kobe. I, I watched a little bit, but LeBron's kind of been the guy that. This I've is your seen, generation. Yeah, isn't I've it? seen for his whole career, like be, the man. So it's kind of like just naturally I gravitate towards that. I think that's the problem with the kind of goat conversation mm. is it ultimately depends on the age of the person yeah, you're having yeah, the conversation yeah, exa with. Exactly. Because exactly. I reckon if you, let's say you chatted to Matt Johnson about oh, his he'd goat, have, he's uh, going to go Jordan, Jordan all day. 100%. And he'll because have some it's his generation. Outrageous reasons why Jordan's a goat. I think the, the, common, the common argument I get, I mean, <laughs> we could do a whole episode on this. <laughs> the common argument I get in favour of Jordan is his defensive, like he's won Defensive Player of the Year, whereas yeah. LeBron hasn't. Yeah, but I, I, my thing of that is like Rudy, Rudy Gobert, Gobert, Rudy Gobert. Gobert has won Defensive Player of the Year <laughs> yeah. a few years. He's, I don't really, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you're saying. I, I know mean, what you're saying. It. It's there you all, go. Yeah, so I did try and make the room kind nah, of basketball it's a, it's centric. Cool. Obviously, this is a this is also where I I write music because that's a, a, a factor of my life. Is yeah. I was in uh, I've been in bands a lot of my like young mm -hmm. life, and so I've got instruments and stuff, and I write music still. It's so a very a very very cool room. And very, then very cool. out of shot, I've got a wall of sneakers. That Lewis will be taking some home. With yes, him. Lewis is already eyeing up pairs <laughs> to take. Uh, there's a strong selection of footwear. Yeah, strong um, selection. So if anyone wants to know more about that, then let us know in yes. the comments. Um, but yeah, so sh let's let's maybe like do the formal yeah. introduction. Let's do it. I'm going to play the intro music. What we got? Um, it's the same one that I use for a lift off. Yeah, yeah. I wrote I wrote this bit of music like 15 years ago. And it's just like a, I did, it's just like a little hip hop yeah. kind of vibe. Yeah. And I never did anything with it, so I thought, oh, I will use it for so, this. So, how long does it take you to write it? Hang on, wait for it to drop. There you go. Yeah. All right. This is your opportunity to rap over the top of it. I, yo, I cannot rap to save my life. Victor, maybe get Victor. I feel like Victor would be a good rapper. Okay. Or we'll Zayn. Get, get some we'll bars from yeah. some of the players. We'll Zayn, we'll anyway, we'll let it play and then we'll come back. Okay, everyone, welcome. This is officially hello, the hello. first liftoff yeah. in the studio. We'll call this like the little Rockets HQ, if you will. Rockets HQ, I like But it. it's technically just my office studio. <laughs> um, but uh, welcome, everyone. I am Christy Fellows. Um, you may have seen me at games if you come to Rockets games, floating around with a camera. You may have seen me in talking to Lewis on, on other yeah, little snippets yeah, of yeah. liftoff that I do. Yep. And uh, you're probably familiar with uh, Lewis Champion. Yeah. Yeah. you got to say hello now. Oh, hello. I'm Lewis. Lewis Champion, you know me. Rockets <laughs> captain. Rockets captain. How long have you been Rockets captain for? Um, It's my second year. Yeah? Yeah, second year, yeah. Do you enjoy yeah. the role? I like it, yeah. It's a it's it's an it's an easy role. I have a... I, we've had a really good 
uh, supporting cast over the last couple of years. So it doesn't, I don't really have to do much if I'm honest. But you feel like, maybe just, you... I mean, just get together with guys in the, at the start and, yeah. and, and say my little piece. But other than that. You're telling me you haven't had to like light a fire under anyone in any games at all? You haven't had to? No, nah, not really. We've got. You feel like that's Samit's job. Samit, Samit does do a lot of that. So like I, you know what I mean, it doesn't really, like you guys see, it doesn't really fall under my bracket of, of captaincy, I guess, but. He scares me sometimes at games because I feel like <laughs> we need to maybe put a heart monitor on him. Yeah, I worry about him. He's, it's you know what it is with him. He's so passionate, man. and I think that's the thing that pe- you, you see. He doesn't. He's so passionate, and I think that's what um, is is kind of it's tough to differentiate those two between yes. him being passionate and being just mean. Yeah, I don't um, think I, he's not a mean. There's not no, a mean no, no, bone no. in him. No, 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 at all. Like after a game, like when you speak to him, he's just so uh, yeah. mild mannered. Yeah, yeah. But the minute it's like the minute you cross the, that line yeah. as a player, yeah. it's the same for him. Oh, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I think in his mind as well, like he's sometimes if you if you see at practice, like sometimes he'll scrimmage a little bit if if needed. He can still play a little bit. So like for like in his mind as well, he kind of like he. The reason he gets he's so passionate is like because he probably sees like I could I could see the things that you're trying to do or I yeah. could I'm not necessarily do that but I I would I would make that pass I would do this I would do that. So. He's still kind of in that mindset of being a player. I yeah, guess. yeah. But then bit, you know a lot of the best coaches have had that background mm-hmm. where there are players mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Like you look at what someone like it's this is an interesting one with like JJ Redick at the Lakers mm-hmm. now for example. Oh yeah. He's everyone's kind of criticizing him stepping in, but you can see his brain coming from being a player to now being a coach. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's already looking pretty good yeah, for them. No, it is. I, I think they've they done. They've started really well. Um, yeah, pretty strong. And, yeah. yeah, and I think he's. I think he's definitely. It definitely helps. I think some of the young guys. What's the? Uh, is it Connect? Connect. Yes, yeah, Dalton Connect. Dalton Connect. Yeah. I think he like he's done wonders for him already. Um, I think. Just, I mean, we could. We, we should talk about the NBA a little bit, mm-hmm. definitely, because uh, I would imagine. I'd hope that Rockets fans do pay attention I'd to so. the yeah. NBA. I think so. But um, Lakers obviously got Dalton Connect as their rookie. He mm-hmm. was seventeenth pick. That's ridiculous. And he's already now. He's probably in the conversation for. I think, I think I saw something. He's second. I think it's him and McCain, Jared McCain. Yeah. Are first and second at the moment. I think. But, the other evening, he dropped nine nine threes. Nine threes I think yeah. Bro- uh, tied the record for most threes in a game by a rookie. Ridiculous. But interestingly, all people Ridiculous. are saying the stat of like Jordan only scored nine threes in his entire rookie season. <laughs> but that's a kind of a pointless stat, given the fact that Jordan's era, the three wasn't oh, it was, con- it was not even a thing. Was really, not. Was it it, it was considered a, a bad shot. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, now it's like even everyone's running to a three point line. No one's trying to look for layups. It's I think that was the thing for me with the Rockets last season is we weren't very consistent from mm-hmm. the three. Whereas this season, I feel like we've got so many players that can get can hot. Do, yeah, I think get hot. I think can do both. I think we have, I think uh, we have guys who, who drive really well, guys who shoot ball really well, and guys are fifty-fifty guys who can kind of drive and shoot. So I think it. I feel helps. like I feel like the energy around this team mm-hmm. this season is. Is very is is I don't know. Last season, great team, great bunch of guys. Yeah. But this season, I already feel like we've hit the ground running as a yeah. real unit. Yeah, I think I think definitely. I think we've. It's not a, a testament to to those guys, but like our returning guys. And we try to always make a a nice space for guys to come into, um, and to be able to to contribute and feel like a part of a team. And I think Rockets as well. Obviously, it's they're big on family, aren't we? So it's like we want to make sure that when guys come in and they're they're part of the team. They want to make them feel feel com- as comfortable as possible, as quickly as possible. So it's the that, love, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. We try to, but maybe that's part of my my roles as a captain is to try and get guys to to settle in as quick as possible. So yeah, I think can, that's I think that's a good way of putting yeah. it. And like to be honest, like getting to know you, you can see that you know you're a family man yourself. I try. Yeah. Very easy to yeah. get on with. Yeah. So it's probably a good thing to have as your captain introducing the new players, yeah. definitely. Yeah, for sure. We have actually got some questions from uh, fans that, I say cool. fans, some of them might not be fans, I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll go through them in a bit. They were submitted on Instagram. Nice. But um, what else have I got? I got some, we'll, we'll intersperse some questions with some general chat, I reckon. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Um, we'll, we'll kind of, this this format is still figuring itself out and I think we we, we might get some guests on. Yeah, we need yeah. to. Yeah, Because sure. I feel like me and Lewis could form a quite a good Good a co-host situation. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Good. I like that. I think that would be a. I think we need to do that. Yeah, okay. Sure. So there's room on this sofa for someone else. I mean, I have to apologise because I have bought the world's smallest sofa, That's all right. and I'm now encouraging six foot basketball players <laughs> to come and sit on that. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, it might be a bit of a. a it could be interesting. Squeeze, but yeah. 
we'll make it work make it work for sure okay cool so right a couple of questions then i'm going back to the family one okay yeah. uh, what's it been like for you balancing family and basketball um easy if i'm honest um my my partner zoe is a godsend i think she does a a lot for our family um and kind of helps helps in every facet of, of everything to be able to allow me to play basketball and not, obviously not only her we have great support network like my mum um Zoe's dad Zoe's family all of our family we kind of just it's a it, they make it so easy for for me to kind of be able to to play and to and to compete at, at, at this level so your yeah. family have been involved in the Rockets years going back yeah, right yeah since I was since I was a kid um, my granddad used to do the water bottles for the division one men's team so I see like what Samantha does but you see what Samantha does now on on game days my yeah. My granddad used to do that uh, that role for the Division One men's team. So it was written in the stars written that you were going to be a he, captain. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know about written in the stars, but yeah, maybe, you've worked hard. For maybe that they sport. maybe they feel like they they owe me that because <laughs> because it was my granddad used the to champion was. legacy. But yeah, exactly. But he used to do a my granddad also used to make a a, a nice uh, little sweet treat called Rocky Road after the game. We called it Rocket Road. Okay. Um, it doesn't do any more, but yeah, that was a Rocky Road is like there's chocolate. any like OG Rocket fans you might know about that you might know about to, that we need to get some uh, rocket fuel mm. rocky road <laughs> yeah, rocky rocky roads like chocolate marshmallow, marshmallow biscuit is, yeah he used to just put like loads of different stuff in it it was yeah it was crazy i think we could probably sell yeah. that again oh, definitely we okay should. We should. We'll, we'll have a chat this is really a little <laughs> sideline project do you um do you envisage your children following in your footsteps um i i would like them to I'm not like I'm not going to force them no. to play basketball. If they, but like if they if they want to, then fantastic. If they don't and they do something completely different, I'll I'll be there to support them. I feel like you might have missed the opportunity to do a LeBron playing with his son yeah, no, in the same not, team. Yeah, that's not happening. Maybe like in local league, maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe if I'm still playing. At... So hang on, your kids are two and four. Yeah. So let's say they're playing when they're like 17, 18. Mm -hmm. That would mean you would be like nearly 50. Mm. It's going to be tricky. It's going to be tricky. I don't have to my my diet and are you pretty good with diet and stuff uh i i've gotten better i've gotten a lot better is that something you've time. kind of got more serious about as you got older a hundred percent when i was younger i didn't could care less about what what food i ate when i ate yeah but now i kind of i try to i try to to be as disciplined as i can i try i'm not perfect at all but i try really hard do you think about your protein intake things like that um i always try and consume consume some 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 form of protein within my meals so mm -hmm. every meal that i have so if, if i can um but i'm not really i'm not too kind of like focused on it but i try to do you do much in the way of um like spending time in the gym lifting weights or anything like that yeah so i i do i do a lot of lifting in the in the off season uh it's hard to get it in kind of in in the, during the season obviously with 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 life with basketball with family it's, mm -hmm. it's tough to find the time um but i try to live twice a week if i can that's good um may, mostly trying to get before practice some some of you may see me before games on a on a on a saturday or a sunday um i try and get in the gym at, at logan valley before um i get there early to get a lift in just because it's probably the only spare time i have so yeah um but i try to my, my body always feels better after i've had like if i if i lift twice a week in in season i always feel a bit stronger or a bit more stable on the court rather than if i don't i kind of feel a bit my jump shot feels a bit weak do you have like any that. particular kind of routines in the gym that you focus on um i try to my first thing i do is try to stretch and then in terms of lifting i never try to lift like upper body on a game day mm. i try and do just more legs to activate my legs and glutes and stuff like that um but other than that i've just got like a little program on my on my phone that i follow right um it's like a little app that just tells me what to do because i'm terrible at if you put me into a gym set and was like, can you go work out? I would have, I'd probably just do bicep, bicep, <laughs> bicep curls and chest press for 40 minutes and then just leave. So is it like, do you do a lot of mobility work and stuff like that? I try to, yeah. I've definitely incorporated that more since I've, since I've got older. Cause yeah. My body just hurts otherwise. Um, but um, yeah, I try to incorporate that way more now than I, I used to. I used to just, I used to just kind of get up and go when I was younger. The thing is, you're only 31. You're, yeah. you're making out like you're, you know, you're closer to my age. Yeah. Like for the record, I am 40. Um, I mean, I obviously have got very no, good. There's no way. There's I've no, got a good skincare see routine. The certificate. There's no. There's no way of. I, my skincare routine is using the same old towel every day <laughs> and zero products whatsoever. <laughs> Maybe a touch of moisturizer if you're lucky. <laughs> Um, but I um, had a background in bodybuilding mm -hmm. 
Um, I did bodybuilding for like 10 years and that kind of gave me a good foundation for strength. And then I got into running a couple of years ago. I think I felt like as I got older through my 30s, I was like, and getting closer to 40s, like it's all well and good lifting weights, but mm-hmm. you've got to be fit and mobile. Mm-hmm. And so therefore for you, I totally understand like the mobility being such a vital because oh, yeah. the movement in basketball is like almost like nothing else oh, really. Yeah, it's crazy. Like people think obviously football is very fast and athletic and mm-hmm. dynamic. Mm-hmm. But the amount of like ankle problems you mm-hmm. get with basketball players, for example, just from the movements, yeah. like you have to be so careful. I think as well, like with with in terms of like the basketball and football, is like in basketball you're changing direction both ends of the floor. Like yeah. it's not just like defensively, you're, you're doing it in like in such close proximity to to each like offense and defense. Whereas like in football, you may if you're a striker, you may only try and change direction maybe like. I don't know if, if you've got the ball, you're trying to do it, but you could have a few minutes where the ball's that never end and you're just chilling for a little bit. Whereas basketball, you're constantly yeah. kind of going back and forth. You could be playing offense, trying to turn around, play defense. It's it's constantly it's split so, second decisions yeah, as well yeah, in basketball. It's, exactly. So exactly. like that's why you know what we see as ankle breakers in defense, where someone completely wrong foots something. Yeah. You can totally see why that happens yeah. because like you've got a split second to try and get your feet yeah. in the right position, right? Yeah. A split second otherwise it could be it could end up on youtube <laughs> youtube instagram have you had any bad have you had any bad I situations knew question, i knew a question was coming um have i had any bad situations have i like ankle breakers where someone's done you i and you've ended think, up going viral I, on somewhere not not viral because i don't think these times it was viral wasn't really a thing at these times when i was when it happened to me but i, I played in newcastle for a few years um i went to university up there and we played reese's old team uh loughborough and uh, Reese was playing, and one of his teammates it wasn't really like an ankle breaker. I like there was a video of it floating around somewhere, and I remember seeing it on social media. But it wasn't like an ankle breaker. I like went, to, I stepped on my foot, and I slipped. But it looked but like from the from, ah, the classic, from, the stepping no, but, on the foot is the worst. But but from like the from from the angle that the camera caught it, you don't see that. So it literally just looks like yeah. he crossed the heck out of me. And I, <laughs> yeah. So that's that's the only time I've ever really had anything remotely close to I don't play defense enough to to get yeah to get across I mean guess if you ask Reese Reese maybe because he's he'd tell a different story he'd probably tell a different story he's probably been I, I don't know I I, can't, I, I can never really see Reese getting crossed over he's, he's so, quick he's so quick that he probably just recover straight away yeah um but I'm sure some people have got some some uh some nasty stories about being crossed over. yeah definitely I think they're also you get people now like almost pushing off players yeah. don't you so mm-hmm. people go down because they step on the foot almost yeah, push off yeah. and then step back yeah. I think they're changing are, the rule for that. I think. Are they? I've thought I've heard something about. Oh, that'd be good about, if they did. So like banning push pushing yeah. up late. Yeah, because it does get it. It can be. It's, I think it's so hard defensively. I think there's so many in Barcelona anyway. There's like there's so many, it's so tough to defend. But like offense gets so many kind of like little like little loopholes mm. that they can kind of to create that space from the defender. Whereas like defenders, as soon as you kind of encroach on that uh, uh, offensive guy's space, it's kind of like you're borderline territory where you get foul or you could be this a, is it game, it's like planting your feet yeah as quickly as possible yeah, right yeah yeah we could get very technical i don't yeah. know if, if don't know if people want to kind of get into the kind of technical kind yeah. of aspect of basketball yeah. but you as a you've coached people as well right yeah yeah i do some coaching i do some coaching now for rockets so I'm, I'm in the community um doing like a, a we coach i think we see a thousand kids a week i don't see them but like in terms it's of across the community, yeah it's, it's such a big such a, a, a big part of the club and um and not just me but the, the other coaches do an amazing job of delivering i think really really great sessions for for kids to kind of in that introduction to basketball or even kids who are looking to take that next step i think we have kind of got it covered on all bases at the moment which is really good that i think blew me the blew me away the most when i got involved with the rockets a couple of years ago was the size of it because oh, yeah. on the surface you think oh it's a men's team mm-hmm. and a women's team yeah. oh they've got a wheelchair team okay yeah. so you see those things mm-hmm. But no one really sees below the surface mm-hmm. that community program oh, yeah, with no, working with over a thousand kids. Yeah, no, it's, it's all the different teams. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. Oh, it is. I think, and even like the if you, like, who have the community, we have the club stuff. I think if you, even if you just looked at, looked at there as a community and the, and the the club in terms of like the, we have kids from I think it's under tens, under tens or it's under eighteens or. Uh, or, and EABL, which is obviously the yeah. the it's confusing. I don't really there's know a lot. much about it, but like there they, there's lot. so much. Yeah, they, we have so much going on, which is which is fun. Which is good to have. It's good a good problem to have. So you've obviously you said you played in Newcastle. Mm-hmm. You played 
did I hear that you played with Team GB under twenties? I played with Team GB under twenties. Yeah, what was that like? Yeah. That was fun. I, uh, it was it was a great experience. I played with some some really good some some really good um, some really good teammates, and I think we had that year that I played was the first year we got promoted to Division A, I believe. So like there was, um, we went to Romania and yeah, I mean, I, to be fair, I didn't play too much. So I had a really good, there was a guard de- uh, called Devin Van Oostrom, um, who was the point guard above me, a, a, an amazing player. Um, but it was, I was, I, I was just grateful to be along for the ride really and being able to, to be there and experience it and play with, with great players, um, in, in that GB setup and it was, yeah, it was, re- it was really fun. I really enjoyed it. Did you get to see a lot of, did you travel around Europe at all? Yeah, so we went to, I believe we went to Portugal, Finland and and Romania for the championships. Did we go anywhere else? I don't think we went anywhere else, but it was, it was cool. I've been, yeah, it, it was, basketball was, I'm lucky enough that basketball's kind of taken me, taking me around the world. I've been to China, um, I've been to like Belgium, been to amazing Poland, which is a, a fun experience. <laughs> What's your favorite country you've been to? Um, China, I think. Yeah. China, yeah, for sure. Because it's just, I think they, it's just such a culture shock. It's so different to, yeah. to anywhere else I've, I've ever been. A bit like Japan, I suppose. Yeah. It's similar, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's, I don't know, it's, it's, I love, I love traveling. If I could, if I could, if I had millions of pounds to go and travel the world, I yeah. would, because I think it's, going to see different cultures is, is a is a great, great hey look you've got plenty of years in your life to do all yeah, that yeah so you yeah. can take the family you can go see see yeah. all sorts right yeah. yeah for sure um okay another question i've written down what advice do you give to young players who are trying to get into the sport but we're trying to develop themselves i think you have to you have to try and take it s- as seriously as you can from f- as early as you can um and i think just try to have fun with it yes yes i take it serious but try balance of seriousness yeah, serious and, fun. And, and fun i think because with anything i feel like if you're if you're passionate about it you don't want that passion to kind of die out because it's because it becomes like more of a, a chore than something you enjoy doing so i think you have to try and find that balance between just take take it very serious and like want to improve at your craft and want to get better and want to improve but also try and have try and have some fun with it along the way where did your motivation kind of come from from a young age to, to play basketball well to play basketball but also to persevere to keep getting better uh i think my mum my mum was as a big a big influence in my life of just kind of a, a steady kind of uh picture of just she's always kind of i've always, I've always wished that i had just like a, a an ounce of the work ethic that she has I think I have it in some, but she, yeah. I'm she, sure she'd probably say you have a little bit more. I'm, I, maybe, I, maybe I do, but I think, yeah, I've, she's always been amazing to me in that regard. Like she's always worked super hard and I've, as a kid, I've never really wanted for anything or everything's, I've always felt super supported, even up until now, like as an, as an adult, as a, as a grown man with my own kids, I, I still feel love and support for my mum like every day. So it's, um, I think she's a massive influence on me, not only playing basketball, but wanting to, to be a to be a, the best person I can be. She must have definitely seen the potential in you then, in order to make sure that you, you know, got everything done that you needed to yeah, do. Yeah, I, I mean, I, su- I I assume so. I'd like to think so. I think she uh, she was. I think she always would have liked me to have played basketball. Um, she was gonna. You may you have no idea about this, but um, uh, my my full name is Lewis Jordan Champion. After. Wow, Michael Jordan. This but, is a bombshell. But there was a there there was a there could have been I could have been called Lewis Magic oh, wow. Champion after the Orlando Magic. That's my mum's favourite team oh, back wow. in the day. Okay, so, so your I've mum's always been a basketball. Yeah, fan. she's always been a basketball fan. I think that's my my earliest um, memory of basketball is my mum always had an Orlando Magic T-shirt, and I was like, I just liked the design of it. I didn't had no idea it was to do with basketball at the time. Um, and then we had a I had a hoop in the back garden. I used to just like used to shoot the ball and try and chuck it from all kinds of different lengths in the garden and then yeah just just from there it's with my passion began. okay well i now need to get a magic shirt put on the wall. <laughs> i've been meaning to get um like a shack maybe a shack yeah, orlando cool. shirt because yeah, yeah. i like all the old mm. the old the shirts pinstripe one yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah. the classic yeah. what are your favorite what are your iconic shirts that you like Ooh, i don't know i like the pinstripe magic one is is definitely up there the raptors the raptor i about to say that the raptors one i saw that today actually the Carter. i'm sure they I'm sure they wore a variation of it. Uh, they um, they they did um they they did a retro version yeah. of their court with their with the the logo sick, on it. It's so cool. I love I love that logo. I think that logo is yeah. It's one of the logo. best. Yeah, hundred percent by far. 
I also I like, I'm trying to think of it, um, it's one of the, the Grizzlies one, the classic mm. Grizzlies one's like quite the, good. the black and with the... Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the kind of really aggressive, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. jagged logo. Yeah, 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 There's yeah. so many classics. Yeah, yeah. I need to get more. Yeah. It's a, an addictive thing. I actually, that Jordan one, right? There's a vintage shop in Reading. Mm-hmm. Uh, I shouldn't probably advertise it because then people swoop in <laughs> and take all the good stuff. It's a vintage shop in Reading. I'm not going to say where. No, plug them, plug them. Plug okay, them it's Pink shop. Pink Flamingo. I'm going there tomorrow. And the problem is, I, 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 it was not long after it opened, I, I went in there. Mm-hmm. And that, that was in there for like 20 quid. Serious? And it's a champion Decent. It's a champion remake. Yeah. But they sell for like, on eBay for like 150. Oh, wow. So I was like, I'm having that. Yeah, why not? I love... It's silly I, not yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. It's silly not to. But you can pick them up quite cheaply if you know where to go. Like eBay's quite good for old shirts as well, to be fair. But yeah, so it's all good. But yeah, so we can talk about iconic. Iconic shirts. Any other classic players that you kind of like looked up to? Obviously, um, you would have. LeBron's a big, big character. LeBron's but a big character. I looked up to, not, nah, not, not really. Obviously, Kobe. I remember my first ever. Um, obviously, I'm a big, I'm a big video game guy. So, my first ever basketball video game I played with Kobe Bryant and nice. I was like I, this is a funny story actually I uh so when I first started playing basketball um my my granddad took me into town HMV do you remember HMV yeah my yeah. band's music was sold in HMV amazing shout out HMV um yeah to me HMV and I picked up a, a basketball game I had no idea like I think it was like NBA live 2000 and something I don't know I couldn't tell you but the couple of days before I'd watched my first Rockets game so like I went on to NBA Live mm. looking for <laughs> looking for Matt Johnson on the <laughs> looking he, for Matt Johnson he on, love that. on the Rockets and I was like Mum th- this 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 game's not real like Matt Johnson's not on here I was looking for number seven Matt Johnson couldn't find him so I was like I saw I found another team it was like yellow and gold I saw sat playing I saw Kobe I was just like, oh this guy's the guy I think he had the best rating so I was like I'll just play with him um, but yeah so that was my kind of like my so you're telling me that you Matt Johnson was someone that you looked up to. I but yeah, potentially, potentially as like a, as a kid maybe. Sounds yeah, like as a it. Kid, maybe. Hang on, so he, he was number first, seven he, as he well. He was my first ever coach. My, Matt was my first ever coach at, right. at Rocket. So um, yeah, potentially a little bit. I, I went looking for him on an NBA game, having no idea that Rockets went on there. This is going to blow his mind. <laughs> so hang on, he was number seven as well. Yeah, yeah. Is that why you were number seven? No, I I no. Uh, Matt would love to know, love to think that's why I'm number seven, but it's not, unfortunately. Um, no, uh, my my son's birthday is the seventh nice. of October, so um, that's why I changed to, to number seven. I used, I like used to wear number four um, or number eight. But okay, I changed to seven when I when I came back. I think I changed to seven, or maybe I didn't have seven my first year, maybe my second year, um, just because yeah, my son Quincy was born on the seventh October, so it was. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. What else yeah. have I got written down here? Okay. Here's a good one. Go for it. What do you hope for the future of the Reading Rockets? Um, these are all my questions, yeah. by the way. I hope. I hope that they remain successful. Um, I hope that we can grow basketball as a as a whole in the country, not only just in Reading. Um, and I hope they kind of get the recognition they deserve in terms of. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's. I think, I think we all feel that. Yeah. I think they. I think. I say they like us. And, but I think the Johnsons have put so much into basketball in in Reading, and I think in the country, I think they deserve to the recognition of being of seeing it on the, the biggest stage possible. Yeah. Um, and I think they deserve it. I think they've done. I mean, they do to do some really good things, and they try to they try to to bring new ways of, of engaging people each year, um, and kind of getting like you say, get, trying to get seats on or bums on seats. Um, and I think yeah, I think I think they deserve for it to kind of to see to see it played at the highest at the highest highest stage possible. Yeah, it's good. I mean, we've got a game in this SLB mm-hmm. yeah, cup which is cool. coming up, yeah, which sees us playing against some tough opposition, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, Sheffield. I'd have no idea what they're like, but yeah, I'm assuming they're going to be. So they're BBL team, good. right? Yeah, they are the BBL team. Yeah. What's that going to? You know, are you, are you excited for that? Yeah, it'll be fun. I think it's always fun to play. To play any game is is always fun and exciting. Like we play. But I think it's all playing against a, a, a BBL team. We know we don't really, or SLB team, sorry. Um, we don't have anything to lose. Um, so we can kind of go out there and play free and, and do you know what I mean? Maybe, maybe give them a, a good game and try to try to get a win. Do you find it's 
easier to kind of get yourself motivated for tough opposition whereas maybe you play a game lower in the table mm-hmm. you find yourself getting complacent i don't i don't necessarily know if it's complacency i think like you underestimate them yeah yeah i think when you're playing against better opposition it's kind of like you're you you want to make the right pass or you want to do the right thing because it's like i need to otherwise they're going to capitalize on it and it's going to be they'll they'll run off with it whereas when you're playing it's lower maybe lower opposition or someone who you feel like you should be able to beat you may try to do things that maybe you you not that you shouldn't try but you may try uh an extra bounce before you pass it or you might try maybe the a new step back that you learn or something <laughs> to try and do you know what I mean to try and yeah. get the crowd going when it's like um so i think it's i think you have to try and stay so i think it's a very hard skill to be able to stay um not complacent but to, to try and stay in the moment i think in a in a game regardless of who you're playing i think that's tough i think it's a, a, a hard thing to 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 be able to get that to go but what i find interesting is obviously we're listening we're chatting with lewis now he turned up earlier knocked on my door opened the door and he was very quiet and he was very chilled <laughs> and he's very calm and you can he's got there's a calmness about mm. him right and he's very you know relaxed mm. And yet, when you step onto the court and the whistle goes, it's different. It's a little bit you're different. different. Yeah, I always say it's like my, I'm not a, I'm not a horrible person in in real life. So you're not horrible. Person I'm not horrible when you on play. the court, but like I feel like I get out like that that side of me on the basketball court. So like I when I come off the off the court, I kind of just go back into my my little my little uh my little box and just, just be myself. you're quite happy just to kind of switch that off yeah and like kind of just yeah. yeah i've kind of i've released my demons on the basketball court and then... i think people i think that's another reason why competitive sport for everyone mm. is a benefit like mm. everyone needs an outlet right Oh, for sure yeah for sure like i don't want to get talking about domestic violence or anything like yeah. that but essentially men need like i mean we could it's men's health month mm-hmm. i think yeah but we all need, like, and even everyone on this planet needs an outlet to kind of get their, well, frustrations maybe, mm-hmm. or just like, we all need to en- release energy. I energy. Think energy. You need to get that. Like, you may have things going on in your life. You may have wh- whatever. I think I found that in in COVID, when we when everyone was kind of locked in the houses for however long, I started to get like like itchy. Like I needed to do something. Yeah. And I, I realized then that I. I have to kind of stay active. Um, and even now, like if I don't do something for a week, like I haven't, like I said at the start, I haven't trained. I trained a little bit on Tuesday, but then end up getting injured a little bit. Didn't train on Thursday. So like I'm I'm itching to play basketball now. Like I I, I can't wait for tomorrow to, to put my kit on, to, to get onto the court, to start warming up, to shoot in layups, like and just to play. Like I'm, so I feel like it's, you need, you need a, everyone needs their kind of their vices to get rid of, that energy yeah, we also. need i mean i i got into running like i said and mm. for me now like when i first got into running it was a challenge because someone challenged me to run the london 10k a couple of years ago <laughs> what a challenge and so what a, it was quite easy i could not do that no way well I, when i first started it i couldn't do 5k mm-hmm. at all like without stopping what do you run now like what's your is it like pb is that a, pb well, what distance 5k yeah and my 5k pb is like a 19 minute and what was it when you started Oh, the first time I ever did it, I think I remember it, it clocked out around 30 minutes. So you've gone from 30 minutes to Yeah, but this is 19. from no running to running religiously. Really? And like That's marathon crazy. times are coming. I'm like, my times are still getting better, basically, because mm-hmm. I'm one of these people that you might be able to tell gets kind of obsessive over, not mm-hmm. obsessive, dedicated, right? Mm-hmm. I find that, I don't know if it's like, I've never been diagnosed with ADHD, but I always feel like... <laughs> yeah. The more I read about it, the mm-hmm. more I feel like it's kind of Resonates applicable. Resonates a little bit. Yeah, massively. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to be one of these people that kind of like self diagnoses mm-hmm. or whatever, but there's a lot of a lot of characteristics. For sure. it. But whenever I find something that I get into, I get obs- I get so focused mm-hmm. on it, and like running became that for me. Well, it's kind of what made me a knowledgeable bodybuilder. I became a coach as a result of of cool. do- getting into that, and it's not it wasn't even my main job. It was just something I was so passionate mm-hmm. about that I wanted to know everything there is to know about it. Mm-hmm. And then I got into basketball, so I wanted to know everything there is to know about that. I got into train sneakers, so I bought a collection yeah, of sneakers, collection, which is ridiculous, yeah. a wall full of trainers. Um, but yeah, so running that became my thing. Mm-hmm. But now, I feel like I need it for my own mental mm-hmm. health reasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
and like if I don't like I've been I've been a bit injured since my last marathon because I ran so much this year that my shin developed a bit of a stress fracture. Okay, yeah. So it's near, it's about it's about ninety five percent. So I'm still resting a bit because mm-hmm. I've got a big year next year. But where I haven't been running very much, I've been swimming instead and a bit of stuff in the gym. I still feel like I have that this that mi- missing thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I can imagine for you, if you can't play basketball, yeah. what are you going to do? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I when don't, you I when you to. retire, whenever I, that is, yeah, I don't. I just don't. I don't think I. I don't think I could sit around. Zoe says this to me all the time. She's like, I don't. Because we talk about like obviously when it when or if I retire or like what what will you do? And I said like, she's like you you won't just stop playing. Like it's not gonna. I don't think I ever stop playing. I think you're gonna become I'll like try, a veteran player. I'll try. I'll try to play for as long as my body will allow me to play. Um, in terms of the Rockets. And then I think in terms of like, after that, I'd I'd like to continue to play at a lower level if I could. Um, if not, I'll, I'm sure I'll find. I might just I might just turn to the gym and just get super strong and just, just get massive. Just get jacked. Like, just why not? Man? I reckon you probably could. I yeah. reckon you probably got the genetics yeah. just to kind of put on some serious. I, but again, but like, all just I think it's uh, you. I like you probably. I need something in my life where like I can go and just just and compete. So I think I think that's what I enjoy about it is just going to compete yeah. against. Even though when I go to a gym, like you kind of compete against yourself to yeah. can I lift this or I'm I'm can I lift this for ten reps or That's I've it. got eight. Can I? So I think I'll, I'll always have that that um, installed in me. I think so. I don't think that will ever go. Even uh, I can't ever not see myself trying to do something yeah. so, something it's physical. Addictive. Yeah, that think, competitive edge as yeah. well. I think then it will it'll be me trying. I'll compete through my kids. Then I think maybe when I get when I'm unable to do it and maybe my legs and my joints are finished, living I'll vicariously be, through yeah, your kids I'll be on the sidelines shouting you're not going to become one of those people no you? do you know what I've I, again I, me and Zoe talk about this quite a bit and I said to said to her like I because I coach so I see kind of what some parents are like um in terms of their kids are playing and they're like they're trying to coach them and I want to just really grab the parents and say just let them play like just let them yeah. just let them figure it out for themselves because they, they, they learn so much more if you give them the answer all the time they're not going to learn so I always said to Zoe, like, whenever the kids are in any kind of sporting environments now, I just kind of just let them let them figure it out and let them do whatever it is they want to do or let them, and it, yeah, and it, it yeah. seems to work. Otherwise, they just, you know what I mean? They, People I, have to make their own mistakes. Yeah, right? exactly. Otherwise, you never learn. You never learn. Yeah, I like yeah. that. That's good. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, we're going to do some questions now Perfect. from uh, the Instagram. I did post nice. a thing on the Instagram asking for your questions. Nice. Um, I'm just making sure it's recording because imagine if it, if it wasn't. <laughs> Um, no, we're all good. Okay, so how many have we got? Only a couple. Are they all from kind of people you probably would recognise? Cool. I feel like we need a little kind of audio. Mm. Hang on. Go for it. I mean, we could have some game show music if you want. <laughs> I like that. Does that good? Like or, that. or I just, I think we probably drop that. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna basically ask you a question and a play. What have I got here? So, here we go. Why is that not doing anything? Question. <laughs> Question. Oh, I like that. There you go. Yeah. I, like, I like little that's samples. It's a big tune. Uh, this comes from uh, Hugo Baller. Yep. You might have seen Hugo yeah, yeah. on uh, Instagram. Baller. Big. Is he a big baller? Sense, yeah, he's a, a little kid. Great, great hooper. Gonna, Shout very, out very, Hugo. Very bright future, I think. Yeah. Great, great hooper, yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Do, you, do you think we've got some real strong kids coming through? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think so. As long as as long as we can, as long as we can keep them keep them within the club, I think you've got some really, really, some really, really some a lot of a lot of talent coming through the club. I think we could talk about the future of British mm-hmm. basketball. I suppose mm-hmm. and that's another show. Probably. Yeah. Anyway, he asks, "What game do you most remember?" I don't know. There's loads. Um, I had a game. I had a game of few. In terms of a Rockets game, or just in general. In, in that's general, the question: Is what game do you most remember? Could okay. be a game, you, your game of cards you played on the bus. Uh, no, nah. um, I said a game. I, I had a I had a game when I was in Division One where I had forty three points. Yeah, that game is that a highest scoring game. Highest scoring game I've had in yeah in Division One. Um, so that game kind of I always kind of try and tap into that a little bit when I you know, have a bad shooting performance. I think you have had 40, 43 points one time, Lewis. So you, you can score the ball. Like 32 last season, mm, was it? Yeah. On, yeah. on your yeah. birthday? Yeah. 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 Again, I think it was in Essex. No, was Essex. I remember. I, was it in Essex? I think or? I had 30 against Essex and I had I had 30 something against Thames Valley. 
Pay attention value last year as well, and I had thirty something. That must be a nice feeling. Yeah, it's. Do you know what it is? I, I always feel like in those games where you score a lot of points, like I don't really, I don't really remember. You kind of just go into like a little bit of a zone. Like That's a, a, nice. Yeah, and it's like you kind of just just flow. Like it just just happens. Everything feels nice. The the basket feels like it's yeah like ten foot wide. Love that. Yeah, and it's just like you, you're just chucking it up there, and it's just everything's in line. I feel like I could just chuck it like this, and it would it would fall into the basket. You um, hear you hear snooker players say that like when they're in that zone. Mm. I mean, obviously, a completely different sport. Mm. But you think about how small those pockets are. Mm-hmm. When they're in that zone where they feel amazing, they say the pockets just, just feel like yeah, huge. Yeah, and that's exactly I think it's exactly the same for basketball. Like when you, I think it's when you, when I when I not me personally, me personally, but maybe not just me. I think when you score the ball, I mean, you've scored it a little bit. You can't even just when you see the ball go through the hoop a little bit. You're like, okay, I, you've seen it now. And it goes through again, and it goes through again. You're like, oh, okay. I kind of know, I have the the feeling for how how I need to position the ball to get it into to go into the basket. And I think when you get into that kind of flow state, I think it's yeah, it's it's get, basketball's a very very fun game. Obviously, frustrating as anything when mm. when they're not dropping. Um, but, but like golf, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose very very much like golf. Very much like you played a bit of golf. I have played a little bit of golf. I'm try Bailey is Bailey is is uh, really using his patience very well with me. <laughs> Very, thank you very much, Bailey. So yeah, Bailey, obviously our game day announcer is uh, the golf pro himself from yeah. Golfplex. Amazing. Has he been helping you? He's amazing, man. We went. I played one game of golf with Bailey, and I, I wouldn't be surprised he didn't want to play with me ever again because he was just, he was just like, I think he had one ball for the entire round, and it was me, Reese, and uh, a, another guy who we played with, and um, uh, Andy, and um, yeah, I think we probably lost between us, maybe like. 10 15 mm. balls maybe me i maybe lost like 10 15 balls myself but bailey was just like he was just hitting it and finding the ball and waiting for us that we were down there somewhere yeah but he's a if you're a prof- bit it's a bit like you he as always, a professional he, al- bar. he always says that he's like yeah but lewis i can't shoot the ball like you shoot the ball. Yeah. Like, yeah but i understand that but like i i want to be i just can't i can't i, I need you to teach me yeah i just uh, teach me how to throw a basketball properly because yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like I'm doing it but then when I watch it back it just looks like I'm heaving it, yeah. it do, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong it's just repetition that, man repetition yeah, that's, maybe what, that's what it is repetition alright hang on next one we need it question uh, okay the next one is from this is a name I kind of recognise I think it's a, a Jay Spurrier yeah that says who is your favourite academy player you have been teammates with <laughs> I can't think why you would have asked that. I wanted to say him. Nah, um, I like Jacob. Yeah, so Jacob, Jacob played with Jacob. us last season, yeah, yeah, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, good guy. Jacob's a good guy. But he always, do you know what I like about Jacob? He's always in like a good mood. I never see him. He was such a lovely yeah, guy. Yeah, he's just such a, a nice guy to have around and be around. Um, uh, yeah, and he's, I think he's playing really well. He's, he's injured at the moment, but I think he was, he was doing really well at Angular Ruskin at uh, the start of the season. Um, Any other notable academy players that you've enjoyed um, playing with? I enjoy playing with them all, man. I think they, I think they all have their, their. Do you think they bring something to your game as well? Obviously, they're young, but they're hungry, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I think, I think this year we've got since I've been back in uh, for Redden anyway. This year with with Isaac, with Ethan, Adam, um, and George, I think we've got some of the like the, the guys who really, who are really kind of fighting for those spots and those minutes at the moment, which I've seen in the last like few years. Um, because they, they, those guys in practice, they I mean, they look just as good as some of our other players. Yeah. Um, which is, do you know what I mean, which is a testament to them, a testament to the academy, um, and the kind of work they put in. And I think the thing about them now is they they don't really back down from anything. They don't back down from anybody really, and they're not they don't they're not scared to to go at you in yeah. practice, which is which is always fun. Like George is George, a great guy. And if you I mean if you see him, if you see him outside of basketball, you maybe you wouldn't wouldn't think this, but he's talks the most amount on a basketball court which is lovely which I love it must be like you isn't yeah. it you're a quiet mild yeah, banner chap yeah, you get on the yeah. court and you're a different it changes yeah that's it it's a good yeah, thing yeah. right I'm going to ditch the sound because yeah. it's too slow <laughs> um, Jake Champion that's yeah. a familiar one to yeah. you he my, says, co- my cousin your cousin my cousin there you go is it in the genes it's definitely in the genes yeah, man. yeah it's in the genes yeah. me and him have a, a thing where like we, so he used to play basketball we're both pretty sporty um, play football play basketball he plays golf as well, so like we we always say whenever we do anything good in the sport, we say it's in the genes. Like we're we kind of it was always installed in us to be to be good at sport. I like that. Yeah. Okay, um, Miss CIU, CIU, where do you see yourself in five years time? Well, I don't know. I don't really like to think like that. If I'm honest, like I know it's a it's a good question, but 
I like to I always like to stay present in the moment and just kind of you'll still be playing in enjoy five years. I think so I don't I, I like to be playing for as long as I can um, you just need to do what LeBron's done and invest like a million pounds a year yeah, into if I could maintain, just, maintain yeah, yourself if I could just, yeah, just, maybe I'll just take my money and put it into my body and that will yeah, that's fine yeah, just yeah, put it all into yeah. like maintenance yeah, basically be fine. Uh, who else have we got uh, D Oliver 19 what's your favourite part of being a rocket um if I'm being honest, I say the community and the fans. I like that. Uh, I think the the vibe that they bring every year, and I just I enjoy interacting with them. So you know I mean, it's nice to kind of. I had a conversation with one of the parents recently, and um, and she was like, she said to me, "Do you do you feel like a celebrity?" And I was like, "No, no not like I don't really at all." But the fact that people kind of see you like that, you're always, signing autographs. Yeah, I know. I'm signing autographs, signing all kinds of stuff, and it's. Do you know what I mean? And I. I I'll never take that for granted. It's nice to kind of because I, for me anyway, like I was, I used to watch the Rockets games as a kid and go and do that exact same thing. Um, so like it's it's kind of full circle for me. So I'd always try and try and stay t- stay grateful and humble. Here's a question: way. Have you ever been like recognised out and about in Reading? Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, but it's like I I don't I don't enjoy that kind of stuff. Like I just <laughs> I'm just an, I'm just me. I'm just a normal person. Yeah. I'm not like. I mean, it's probably some guys who like that kind of stuff and eat it up, but I just, for me, it's more like I, I'm i exactly the same as, 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 as anybody else. I remember back in the peak of my, like, playing in the band and everything mm. and people would occasionally recognise me and mm-hmm. stuff. It's kind of a weird feeling. Yeah, it's very weird feeling, especially when, like, I don't I don't see myself like that at all. I don't, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm just a, a human being just like you are. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. But you are, you mean a lot to people yeah. and you mean a, like you think they turn up and you give them that, like, I don't know, like for me, like I've never been a big fan of a football team, mm-hmm. but I see friends and family, what it means to them and mm-hmm. how it like can be incredibly great or it can be very upsetting. Oh for yeah, them, yeah. Right? It can mess up their whole week. But since I've got into coming to Rockets games and being a part of the team I'm very invested mm-hmm. in how we do mm-hmm. obviously I've been to two finals with you yeah. already yeah. in one season hopefully, hopefully a third well well, we're, yeah well we're yeah. going to yeah. we've got finals coming yeah. up in March is yeah. it March I'm not sure I think so um, so I now feel that investment mm-hmm. and when like we have a great game against top opposition the lift it gives me yeah, for sure. is massive yeah for sure so I appreciate yeah. you Yeah. and it's like yeah it what you're doing for those mm. fans is massive. Yeah. I, I think that's why I like I, I. That's what the part of it that I enjoy the most is because it's like I always want to be able to to give back or to be to be just as invested in in them as they are in us. Um, I think that's important. Okay, yeah. good stuff. I like that. Uh, Sam Bentley, eighty five. Yep. Favorite team and player to play against. Favorite team in in NBA Division One. Question is favorite team and player to play against. Mm, favorite team I, I said this on a I said on a was it lift up I said it on before about barking mm. I like I, uh, yeah you did yeah, yeah. Um, so I won't say them <laughs> uh, favorite team I say this year I like I like Thames Valley I used to play for them but like I, I feel like they've they've had a few years where they've kind of been um, like not as good as they could have been um, rebuilding rebuilding and now I think they've, they've kind of they've got some they've had a, little, a few changes and now they've kind of got some some new guys in and they're, and they're looking like a really dangerous team so I'd say I, and I like that I kind of like a, a redemption story I kind of I like of course, that kind of yeah story. we all need that yeah um, my favourite player to play against um, I'm going to say my <laughs> say my friend Blaine uh, Freckleton plays for MK um, it's always fun to play against him it's fun to play, always fun to play against your friend um, and compete against them. Is that hard playing against friends? Because obviously you have to kind of like put that friendship aside. You would think you would think so, but it's like for is it for, like a respect for me and for him? I'd say like it kind of gives you a bit of bragging rights for the <laughs> until you next play each other. Yeah, um, like they beat us in the final last year. Yes, and um, we had an argument about, argument about something. He said, "Yeah, but at least I don't have a silver medal." Oof. Yeah, so I was like, oh, okay, fantastic. So are we playing I, I like them in the final this again? Year. Yeah, so oh. hopefully, redemption story. That's massive. Redemption they beat story. us twice in a row, mate. Yeah, if I'm, it... I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, final one. Uh, this is from our familiar face, uh, photographer Adam, mm-hmm. who says, "What's the favorite picture from this season so far?" Mm, He's at, Adam's taking photos for us this season. He's yeah. doing a lovely job, I must say. Do you know my favorite ones? My favorite ones that I've seen. Uh, there's some of Victor. Um, oh yeah, there's a couple where he's kind of like getting yeah, that ball up, but ball up, but also like just there's yeah, some where you just see the raw emotion on his face. Yeah, and I, I like that because it's kind of like 
you see that kind of what basketball brings for for not for only for the players but kind of you see like you for like the the fans feel that as well so i like i like this kind of pitch where you can see i think we have like a big player or a big shot or something and he's like maybe he's like screaming or he's yeah. i like those. i love the emotion yeah i like, the, I like, like seeing I, the emotion. when i filmed tried to film you guys obviously i'm trying to catch the highlights but mm -hmm. i try and capture you like before games and like in between and stuff mm -hmm. and i really like the kind of what you see what you're going through mm -hmm. like when yeah. you're warming up before a game and we're in that kind of tunnel before you come running yeah. out can see the different range of emotions mm -hmm. in people's minds and how people almost prepare differently mm -hmm. yeah no it is like, what is going through your head before you run out onto that court i'll be I, is it blank blank yeah I, if i'm honest with you now i don't really i don't really think about anything other than kind of what maybe thinking about like scout and trying to remind myself what we're doing on certain guys or kind of if, how we're guarding certain certain uh plays um more time than not i'll try to think about what i'm going to say to the guys to try and get them to get them ready for the game in our little huddle um but other than that just yeah just kind of focusing on the game and trying to trying to stay locked in to to trying to get a win really yeah mindset is everything yeah i watched um the highlights from lakers game last night mm -hmm. and went down to free throws at the end yeah they were ad missed two ad missed mm -hmm. two free throws that basically lost in the game mm -hmm. That's tough, right? Like, free th uh, what's the, what's the mindset like with clutch free throws? Because, uh, like, for you in any situation, mm -hmm. got a free throw in the park, wherever in practice, mm -hmm. you you would think nine times out of ten, no problem. I just think that. Yeah. But what's it like when the game is on the line? Ah, uh, daunting. I, I don't think I don't think I've ever I've been in that situation one time where like we were, we were, one down, so we went one up because I hit two, um, and it was yeah, it was. I hit the first one and that kind of settled my nerves. Yes, the first one's so the second right? one for me then didn't really, I was like, if I miss the second one, we go to overtime. So it's not really, and I think that's the thing is that I always, I've, I've I had a, a coach that told me one time that you shoot in a shot at the, for example, at the end of a, a shot clock um, in like a tied game is way easier than shooting a shot if you're down because it's like that that shot doesn't really mean like you can shoot it and it doesn't really mean anything. The game anything. carries on. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't really mean anything. Or if you're down and you're shooting a shot to maybe put you put you up you can go like, okay well we're down if i hit it great if i don't you tried but like yeah you've got at least you've got a shot off but if you're if you're kind of if you're shooting a shot to try and try and win the game it's like oh, it's that's a that's a lot that's a lot of pressure it's like, there's a lot that goes, and i think it's amplified in your at the free throw line and maybe it might be uh it might be away and there's fans shouting screaming but i think for me if i was we're at home and i'm up and we're down and i'm trying to, to shoot two free throws to, for the win that's that's daunting i think because it's like you're it's just you there the ball and the hoop all eyes are on you it's not like do you know what i mean there's nothing else yeah. nothing else nothing no one else is looking at anything else than it's what all, you're about every, to do yeah your every little movement is being studied by studied, every single yeah, person in that yeah, room it's yeah. a bit like penalties in a world cup final right couldn't do it i don't know how i i was i, I would love to i'm a big football fan so mm. i'd love to i would love to play football um but like who do you support arsenal okay yeah i mean i that's you don't fine. really care do you? Just, i don't mind too much yeah. i mean i could i could say whatever i want really yeah yeah I'd, I'd, i mean i like football but it's not i follow it a little bit but it's like it's, but i'd love to i'd love to take a penalty in like a in like a big game or score a goal off like that that feeling would be similar to hitting a game winning shot but it's like that i think that's it what is it, uh free throws are the same as a penalty it's like yeah. if you everyone is watching that for that outcome. I of, think free throws is harder than a penalty. It's just two of them. Because, no, because a goal is a big it's thing, massive. right? It's massive. But it can, the, I can imagine it, be, it being very small when you're... True, but there's different ways you can take a penalty. You can mm -hmm. hit it hard. You can just smash you it. High, low. You can, yeah, there's yeah. so many more options. Yeah, it's yeah, more yeah. of a kind of, it's almost more of a mental battle. Yeah. Okay, you get players that blast it over or whatever. Mm -hmm. A free throw is like, suddenly that, that hoop feels small. Oh, yeah. And like, it all comes down to muscle memory and technique, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So you just want to get, almost try not to think too much about mm -hmm. it because the more you get in your head, the more you start thinking and overanalyzing. Yeah, it. and I think that's the thing is I had a, I had a, um, when I, I was at Bristol for a little bit and I, one of my friends was doing a, a master's piece and uh, and she was looking at, uh, she was looking at like, men, like your, your, your mentality going into things. And she asked me about free throws she said, "What do you think when you're when you're shooting free throws? Like, what goes through your mind? Like, give me a just like, how do you feel? And for me, it's like a, when I shoot a free throw and it goes through, it's almost like a and it, the first one goes in. It's almost like you know when 
a bit of water drops into like a into like a puddle and it drops and it will just goes out like that yeah it's like that it's just that it hits and it's just calm really yeah and that's how i feel when i when i shoot that i kind just of... just drops and it hits do against... you hear the crowd uh i do i do when i'm setting up yeah but as i like as i take my breath yeah everything goes like i don't really think about anything Amazing. Else. yeah i love yeah. that yeah that's why i take my breath because it kind of just gets every it kind of just i kind of i breathe out and everything goes and i shoot there's been you get some players that have the most ridiculous free throw, free throw. technique yeah, like Yanis had that one where it was taking him like 10 seconds or something oh yeah it was the amount of yeah they were yeah. counting I mean yeah. and you, to the point where he like fouled out of it <laughs> yeah, yeah which was ridiculous yeah. or you had like I can't remember like Dwight Howard used to send like a, like a foot away from the line did he just like I don't I remember like that. is it KD wraps it around his waist oh yeah I'd never I couldn't do that I'd lose the ball who was the guy that always used to kind of look up and say something to someone uh, kind of, it's like, I can't remember if it was someone a couple of seasons ago. He would basically bounce the ball and then you kind of like ha- have a little bit of fake beef with yeah. someone and then shoot and it. And then shoot it. I've seen a guy who, do you know, like, so you know, like on a basketball court, uh, the free throw line, you can stand anywhere on that free throw line. So yeah. you know, you have the players. <laughs> yeah. I saw someone who was standing like right in to the, the corner side. next to a player like this, like shooting it and looking at him and then just shooting it. I might try that maybe in the, maybe I'll try it in the final. I dare you to do a, um, <laughs> a Jordan Mutombo uh, ice shot. Oh no way! You've seen that? I, I've seen that. Yeah, Classic. I couldn't. Oh, that's that's confidence. That's you know I mean. That's six rings. That's what that is. Okay. That's that's yeah. I couldn't do that. Maybe we should. I tell you what. We we at practice. We get everyone to do an eyes shut free throw. See how bad they See are. See if anyone can make it. I think. I, saw, I think so, people will make it. People will make it. You reckon? Yeah, hundred percent. I think. Yeah, hundred percent. Who's the most natural shooter out of the current team we have? Um, I say Simon. Yeah. So yeah, Simon. His shot is so pretty when he just looks lovely. He got he's got uh, pretty hot in the game the other day. Yeah, he's he, he's get he's getting back to it, which is good for him. I'm 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 happy for him. Yeah, I chatted yeah. to him after the game, and you can see. I mean, confidence is a big thing for everyone, mm-hmm. but the minute you start making a few shots, like you say, suddenly you get into that oh, flow yeah. state. Yeah, it changes everything. Yeah, it changes everything. When you see the ball go through the hoop. It's like you could you could have missed five shots, but you see the ball go through the hoop on the sixth one. I think the next five are going in. That's nice. It yeah. resets everything, right? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Well, uh, we could probably chat all night at this yeah. rate, but hopefully, this is uh, this is the start of a first of many. Right? A first of many. How long have we chatted for? That's gone quite quickly. Yeah, right? it has. We have talked for over an hour. Oh wow! Yeah, not Good. bad. Not bad hopefully, people are still here. <laughs> you here? Um, but yeah. So, what do you think we should plan for future episodes? I think, I think we need to get some. I think we need to get someone else on the on. Who's our target? Who do you want next? Oh, we can call know. them out. I don't know. Maybe get Reese. 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 Or maybe Mitch. I want I like Mitch because yeah. like He's elusive. Man. He is like, elusive. Like how much do we really know about how Mitch? How much do we really know Mitch Clark? He could be like like almost like a Clark Kent vibe, yeah. you know. He's a great guy. He's Mild great mannered guy. chap. Again, he's a classic. Yeah. Um you chat to him in person. He's very oh, he's pol- so, he's so polite. Diff- so different on the basketball. He's so court. polite. So like mild man, not mild mannered, but mm-hmm. like just a lovely guy. Mm-hmm. Get him on that court, and so he's different. just like, he's a machine. Right? He's, a, he's machine a machine. Is the word? He's a machine. I don't think he's like he. Have, I think his all round game, like in terms of him able, like playing both ends. Like he, he's one person where like I, I admire his ability to be able to be so locked in, but like focus on every, like being able to understand everything. Like he'll be so locked in, but he'll he'll know that they're running a play like this and doing this. Whereas like, I'm locked in. Like I'm, what I'm thinking about is that one thing. He's he's so intelligent. His password IQ is ridiculous. Like he's, yeah, he is. He's uh, our accountant. He is our accountant. Accountant yeah. by day, basketball yeah. player Bas- by night. Phenomenon. I like that. Yeah. The phenom. Yeah. So yeah, we'll target we'll target him. We'll get yeah. Victor on. I think it'll Victor. be a good chat. Yeah, Victor will be good. Very good. And the hype, the one, the one man hype man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when he's when he's performing like gets everyone fired up oh, really he's, he, I think he's one thing I said about Victor he's one of the guys where it's like I don't think you could ever shake his confidence Any anything could ever shake his confidence like, and I I love that about him that he's just do you know what I mean he's him and he'll be able to regardless of any situation he'll 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 always kind of shine through or come through I mean, he's, you look at players in sporting history you have to believe yourself oh, like 100%. you know you look at someone like Jordan for example like he always would believe he would make that shot. He mm-hmm. would, you know, if they were coming down to final seconds, he'll take that mm-hmm. shot or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, players, Zlatan Ibrahimovic yeah. backed himself, people like that. And they, 
achieved everything they said they would. 100%. And that you've got to believe in yourself, right? Yeah. But yeah, mindset. We could talk about a bit more about mindset. What else should we talk about mm. in future episodes? I don't know. Talk about kind of maybe what guys get on during the, do during the day instead of basketball. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. What outside of basketball. Life, outside, Life of basketball. Outside, outside of basketball. There you go. Well, yeah. anyway, we've talked. Thank, Thank you for you joining much. me no. tonight. Thank you. It's been it's been amazing. And uh, we'll be many more. Good luck this yeah. weekend. Thank two you. away games. Yep. Um, two, two big games. Two big games. Yep. Hopefully we'll continue a good run of form that we've had. For sure. For sure. Yeah. It's a long season to go. It is still, still a long way to go. Get, getting there though. Getting, getting towards Christmas where you get a little bit of a, a break. And then when you come back after Christmas, everything just seems to go. You're excited for Christmas? Like that. Two Two young I children. Am, I am very excited for Christmas. You that get to, when you have children, Christmas is basically reliving your own kind of so, yes i just you know what, i'm i'm not the big christmas i'm not the big christmas person in our in our family zoe loves christmas like she makes it so i kind of just sit there and enjoy it and she makes it so magical for the boys so love that um, yeah so they'll, they'll they'll definitely have a great time and i'll just be there which i mean eating eating the leftovers you're ready to you're ready to consume some calories yeah 100 percent. that's my favorite part of christmas is well hopefully we'll chat food. before christmas oh, i reckon yeah, sure. i think we'll do another episode next month maybe yeah yeah so we'll plan that yeah. but yeah thanks for listening everyone thank you very and, much and um, I guess I should play that the music again like as yeah. a little outro and then we can sort of sort of start quiet like that and say okay thank you everyone for listening this has been Lift Off I've been Christy Fellows he's been Lewis Champion and we will see you next time yeah it's been fun it's been fantastic see you in a bit see you later guys